This year marks the 40th anniversary of director Michael Mann's neo-noir Thief, his first feature film and a crime story that would dictate an ongoing trend in Mann's filmography. Stories of intensely driven men confronted with a crossroads in their life that will either break their will or their world. Thief follows James Conn's Frank, a Chicago-based thief who's incredibly skilled at safe-cracking. But when Frank's ambitions lead him to start working for a crime boss, his entire life is quickly turned upside down, and his fight for survival begins. But the question is, what is Frank fighting for? And what is he willing to sacrifice for the life he seems to want? Thief is loosely based on the 1975 novel The Home Invaders, Confessions of a Cat Burglar, by real-life criminal Frank Hoemer. But the story is an original. However, it's a fictional story intensely focused on depicting its crimes as realistically as possible. And while being Man's first feature film, Thief bears all the hallmarks of the director's filmography. Consummate professionals forced to choose between their code of honor and their lives. Detailed recreations of the criminal lifestyle taken from real-life cops and robbers. Gritty urban landscapes given beautiful life on film. And, of course, the role of bodies of water contrasted against urban life in depicting the soul. Thief is all about the pursuit of a dream in a blue-collar profession and the desperation that the unfair nature of our systems creates in people. Yes, this is a crime story, a story of theft and violence and anger, but it's really the story of what people are driven to do when they realize the system is stacked against them. Thief is a working-class tragedy. Michael Mann's filmography is filled with detailed recreations of real-life processes designed to put both his actors and his audience into the headspace of the people he's portraying. Given that many of Mann's films are hyper-focused on real-world crimes and the people either committing them or trying to stop them, Mann has often employed former criminals and cops as consultants on his sets. The same goes for Thief, where Mann had real-life thieves supply actual tools that Khan and his fellow actors were trained in using on screen. And this attention to detail behind the scenes directs the attention to detail in man and cinematographer Donald Thorin's camera work. Both of Thief's safe-cracking scenes are almost completely silent aside from Tangerine Dream's propulsive electronic score and the sound of the work. Man does not montage. We sit with the job until the job is done, learning to love the process along the way. Thief opens with a wordless scene of Frank and his crew drilling a safe. Without a word, Man illustrates his lead character's skill, determination, and focus simply through the process. You don't need anyone telling you that Frank's good at what he does. You know it just by seeing it. These processes are largely shot in two compositions, wides that show our actual actors operating the machinery, and extreme close-ups that detail the effects of their work. I'd found working a lot of odd jobs as a kid, as a short order cook, on construction, or as a cab driver, that there was tremendous richness in real life experience, and contact with people and circumstances that were sometimes extreme, said man. I was drawn to this instinctively. You find out things when you're with a real life thief, things you would never make up just sitting in a room. The converse is also true. Just because you discover something interesting, you don't have to use it. There's no obligation. Yet life itself is the proper resource. I've never really changed that habit of wanting to bring preparation into the real world of the picture, with a character that actors are going to portray. Man's insistence on process depiction as close to reality as possible creates a verisimilitude in detail that is couched within his heightened stylistic choices of lighting, framing, and editing. The Chicago of Thief is deep shadows, dingy neons, and constantly wet streets that were soaked between takes by a 60,000 gallon water truck. Everything here looks metallic, and Frank will have to burn his way out in more ways than one by the end. This creates a believable yet seductive world. The work is real, the world is dreamlike. The world of Thief is not glamorous, but subtly cool, enough to make you wish you were part of this world. That is, until violence and exploitation end the dream. This reality-meets-dream approach of on-camera depiction is given its inverse in man's stories. Instead, his protagonists are propelled by a dream, an internal dream of freedom, of independence, of family, which is sharply contrasted against the external reality of the world they live in. 
As for that score, Mann had originally envisioned using authentic Chicago blues as the backdrop for his story, but eventually decided on Tangerine Dream's electronic music. The result is a film score that feels formally efficient and driven like its protagonist, and less indebted to the region it's set in. While this is Chicago native Mann's only film set in the Windy City, its universality in musical score underlines the truth behind its entire narrative. This is not a film simply about the criminal underworld, it's a film about being trapped in a system that exploits everyone that isn't at the top. It's Frank's work that brings him into the orbit of Leo, who promises our thief a massive payout for a huge heist. And with Frank's bigger job for Leo and his crew comes an even bigger process. The safe cracking of the beginning was nothing. Now he's in the big leagues and with it comes bigger equipment, bigger risks, and a bigger reward. A thermal lance safe crack that melts steel and nets hundreds and hundreds of diamonds. But the score doesn't make Frank rich. Instead, Leo decides that he'll use it to keep Frank in his pocket forever. Something that our thief cannot abide. I can see my money is still in your pocket, which is from the yield of my labor. Man's filmography-wide obsession with the process shows a belief in the value of work and a love of skill honed and used by the skillful. But Thief's narrative questions if that work can truly benefit the laborer in the long term when done in the context of an exploitative capitalist system. Beyond its central themes, the motifs and style of Thief would go on to influence generations of film. But to discuss this, I've brought my friend Doug from For Every Kind of Geek to explore the impact of Man's debut. Thanks, Matt. Like you said before, Thief was Michael Mann's feature film debut, and he came out of the gate with a vision wholly his own, standing between the rougher, grittier crime films of the 70s and the sleeker, more stylized capers of the 80s and beyond. Thief's cultural impact was both instant and enduring. While it isn't the first crime film to feature themes of the undesirable grasping after the unattainable, Mann's use of dreamy, heightened aesthetics alongside the film's themes of classism cement an entirely new take on the professional criminal, one that's had an enduring legacy in the subgenre. While its predecessors like The Thomas Crown Affair and The Italian Job saw the subgenre as escapism, focusing on bored, rich hobbyists looking for adventure, thieving is both a craft and a living for Frank. Something that he wants to leave behind, but can't. Themes of class and inequality permeate the world of Thief, with Frank's every attempt at living a normal life thwarted by those who see him as an undesirable. The point is, we establish criteria for parenting and an ex-convict compared to other desirable. Wait, so we'll take a kid that's not so desirable. We can see echoes of Thief's premise in most modern crime stories, from Walter White's desperate turn to drug dealing, to John Wick's self-destructive return to crime, to the cold, almost nihilistic detachment in Refn's Drive. In previous films, the Thief was someone to be idolized, a suave, sophisticated rogue who lived by their own rules. But through Frank's journey, we see this genre deconstructed. Instead of liberating him, Frank's work sees him further exploited by Leo, who asserts ownership over everything in his life. Your kid's mine because I bought it. You got him on loan, he is leased, you are renting him. I'll whack out your whole family. Frank may have amassed a small fortune and started a family, but as the world he lives in continues to exploit him, man draws attention to the fact that Frank's family, his dream, may not be able to endure what this life demands of him. Frank may try to ease his way out of the system, insisting that this is just one more job, but the film's imposing title hangs over the rest of the story. Frank might try to build an identity of his own, but to the rest of the world, he'll always be little more than a thief. Building on decades of classic heist stories, Thief brought a paradigm shift to the subgenre that marks its films to this day. The worlds are still vibrant and seductive, oozing atmosphere from every frame, but there's also a danger that cuts through the allure, constantly reminding us that this life is neither long nor rewarding. Looking beyond the adventure and escapism of what came before, Thief and its contemporaries take an approach that's more grounded and human, interrogating what this supposedly thrilling life will cost us in the end. On the flip side of the process of Thief is the internal struggle of its central character, and how this story both builds him up and breaks him down. 
Early on in the film, Frank starts a relationship with Tuesday Weld's Jesse, but it isn't until a lengthy diner conversation that we understand both of these characters and why they're pulled into each other's orbit. The diner scene is, like many of Mann's quiet conversation focused scenes throughout his films, Thief's most compelling moment. The terse, guarded Frank opens up about how years in prison and a sexual assault led him to completely cut off his emotions and attachments in order to survive. In turn, Jesse opens up about her own trauma and what blossoms isn't so much a romance, but an agreement on a dream they can live together. Marriage, family, a child, getting what they want, but what's been denied by the systems they exist within. No one can say that the women of man's films are his strong suit, but Weld's Jesse is given just enough of an internal life here to contrast his lead's emotional stuntedness, as is only appropriate for man, who moved from the prison set TV movie The Jericho Mile in 1979 to a film centered on a man desperate for a life robbed from him by his time in prison, life behind bars largely defines the wants and needs of our thief. But the personality that makes Frank so good at his job, and what was honed by being in prison for a decade, basically makes him incompatible with the regular world he desperately wants to be part of. Frank has an idea of the life he wants. A wife, kids, money, a home. Everyone is a means to filling his wants. Of course, Frank is no innocent man. He wants an ideal instead of reality. And the truth is that the two are incompatible. I have run out of time. I have lost it all. Piece by piece, the dream that Frank has, and which is so easily contained within a postcard vision board he cheesily keeps in his wallet, is put together. But the only scene of real happiness is the post-heist beach trip. Even then, Jesse doesn't seem at ease. Khan's Frank is a man who is entirely self-possessed, and Khan plays Frank as a man with years of experience at keeping everything inside him buried deep, deep down. He knows who he is, he knows what he wants, and he'll do anything to get it. And that's where Thief's major conflict comes into play, the incompatibility of a person's desires with the brutal system they find themselves in. According to one of my favorite critics, Matt Zoller Seitz, man's movies often show lone wolves entrapped and sometimes destroyed destroyed by their own rugged code. Whether the man hero works inside or outside of a society or an industry, he is still forced to negotiate and ally himself with what he believes are like-minded souls, but turn out to be parasites that prosper through deceit, manipulation, and brute force. No sooner has the man hero gotten some hard-won action than another party shows up angling for a piece. On one side of the spectrum is Frank's blue-collar anti-hero fight against the system, on the other is Tom Cruise's max of collateral, completely devoid of attachments until he becomes a worthless shell working for the system. Thief is all about the unfairness of the systems we find ourselves in. Frank is a product of the prison system, someone who simply can't live a successful life in society with a rap sheet. His fight for a successful life in the criminal world leads him into working with Leo for a big score that he thinks will finally give him the life he's running out of time to get. But now our working man is in too deep in a game rigged to exploit him. Thief puts us in a shadow world adjacent to our own, but the systemic exploitation by the people at the top of the business and the people at the bottom who make it work is like any piece of our so-called legit society. The entire narrative arc of Thief is the grasping for something more, only for it all to be ripped away piece by piece by the systems in place. A prime example of this is a minor subplot that may not have much to do with Thief's larger plot, but is a microcosm of its entire outlook. Early on, we find out that Frank's longtime friend and mentor, Okla, played by Willie Nelson, has been in prison for years, and that one of the things Frank wants most is to get him out. Frank learns from Okla that he's dying and, above all, just doesn't want to die in prison. Thanks to Frank's connections with Leo, Okla is able to be paroled through a bribe, but dies almost immediately afterward. All Okla can do is be thankful for a death out from behind bars. It's the first piece of Frank's vision board to be ripped away from him, but not the last. Thief may be about criminals, but it maps directly onto any career in any profession, which is what makes its process and conflict compelling. Frank is a blue-collar worker in his line of criminality. He's successful, but he's low on the totem pole. He's a pro, but his safe-cracking skills are akin to a trade.
This is life. You find yourself with an in-demand skill, but the world says you're not worth the money you demand. So you find someone that says they'll pay you what you want. You do the job, and guess what? You don't get the money you were promised. Now you're in over your head, but you keep working anyway. Why? Maybe the worker is in a constant state of self-delusion. No amount of grinding and climbing will ever get you to where you feel like you need to be. The top of the ladder is already full, and they ain't making room for someone like you. In Thief, Frank begins his work with Leo under that same delusion, the classic one last score motivation. But Frank is a man who has always protected himself from that emotional vulnerability that propels the common laborer. It's why he can't make his marriages work. So let's cut the mini moves and the bullshit and get on with this big romance. But it's also what lets him destroy everything he has, including the corrupt system he's found himself in, to escape that criminal capitalist trap. Like many of the protagonists in the rest of man's filmography, Frank is an individualist who ultimately sticks to his beliefs, but pays the price for doing so. In some of man's movies, the price is death. But in Thief, the price is the death of the dream. We see it in him leaving his crumpled vision board behind in the flames of his once gleaming car lot. Frank's instinct is to be free, and to do so, he burns everything down. He kicks Jesse out to live a new life with their adopted son. He'll pay for them, but he won't see them again. He blows up his home and front businesses to get rid of all traces of his existence. And then he goes after the people that pushed him to regress into this state of nihilism. In his first meeting with Leo, Frank outlines the jobs he would never do. No cowboy shit, no home invasions. And in this bloody finale, Frank finds himself doing exactly what he said he would never do in order to be free. It's quite literally a Pyrrhic victory. Frank walks away a free man, but the cost has literally been everything in his life. Should we cheer on Frank or mourn him? The answer is whether we see our systems as actually escapable or not, but they'll always take what we've fought our entire lives to have. Thanks for watching today's video. It was great to get back into the filmography of Michael Mann after doing videos on Heat and Manhunter previously, and doing this one means that this is the third year in a row with a Michael Mann video. So expect that trend to continue because I love Michael Mann. I wanted to give a special thanks to Doug from the For Every Kind of Geek YouTube channel for joining me for this video essay. I knew he was a fan of Thief, and he's got an awesome YouTube channel, so I figured it would be great to give him a chance to talk about the movie here, and to hopefully push a few of you to his YouTube YouTube channel because he's doing awesome work over on For Every Kind of Geek. A link to his channel will be in the description below, so please check out the channel. Let me know your thoughts on Thief if you've seen it before, as well as your favorite Michael Mann movies or even your favorite crime movies in general. I always love hearing about people's preferences in this genre. As always, thank you to my patrons for their continued support. It is always wonderful to get that support from people for making these videos. And if you'd like to be a patron, it's only a dollar a month for exclusive reviews and early access to every video. I'll be back again again soon with another video, and until then, I hope that you're taking care of yourselves, staying safe, and watching out for one another. See you again soon.